want to start with a little poll that in 10 years will be funny to people, maybe. So if the cameras can zoom out, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see the audience here. But how many of you guys right now own a virtual reality device by a show of hands? OK, a few of any room. How many of you guys own um, an Oculus Rift or have pre-ordered an Oculus Rift? OK, a couple hands in the room. All right. Um, how about an HTC Vive? Sony Morpheus? Any out there? A Sulan all-in-one headset? Zeiss VR1? Any hands? How about Google Cardboard? All of the hands go up, right? A lot of people have owned Google Cardboard. Well, that will change in the coming years. And what I want to talk to you today um, is about reimagining the organization with virtual reality. So I want to start with a little experiment. So if you would close your eyes for me, just indulge me, close your eyes. And then I'm going to ask you to open them in a second. And when I ask you to open them, you all are going to be in Africa. OK? Ready? One, two, three. Open your eyes. Are you in Africa? No, you're not. And that's a problem. But with this right now, we have the ability to put you in Africa. So take off your glasses. Uh, focus wheel at the top. You probably know what to do with that. And, and he can be in Africa um, right now instantaneously. And so that's what we do. We place people inside stories, uh, inside stories for brands, inside stories for journalism, to try to create that unique sense of empathy. And how we got into this, into VR was through AR. So we had been doing live streaming tours for veterans who wanted to see their World War II memorial but weren't able to physically travel. So with AR and VR, we can place people inside the memorials. We can record these memorials in stereoscopic 360 video. We bring Google Cardboard devices like this or the Gear VR to the veteran's bedside. They put it on their face and they can feel like they're at the memorial even though they're not able to physically travel. Uh, that experience we shot in May and our company started soon after that. So what is VR? Well, VR is virtual reality. It's 360 degree or CG. CG stands for Computer Generated Experiences. And they are viewed in a headset. All these headsets um, right here, and if you'd like to try them afterwards, uh, you are welcome to do that. Your mobile device just fits inside right here. Feel free to pass that around. It's a cardboard box. Who would have thought that we would be consuming content with a cardboard box? But it's happening, and uh, you don't need heavy gaming PCs in order to do it. So that's what virtual reality is, video or computer-generated gaming environments. Uh, here are some of the devices that you can see that people are using right now. The Oculus Rift to your right, the Samsung Gear VR, which works with your mobile phone, and also, of course, the most popular, which is the gateway drug to VR, which is Google Cardboard, because it's so low cost. You can get it for about $15. You can view VR in a variety of ways. You don't need a headset in order to view it. You can view it by taking your finger and scrolling around um, on your PC using your mouse. You can view it uh, with your, your finger on your mobile device and scroll it around and see 360 degrees. But the most immersive way that you can view it is, is with actually Google Cardboard and putting your phone inside that cardboard and having the ability that you can be places that you really aren't. So the value proposition for virtual reality to organizations is that it used to be we were outside of the video, right, viewing it on a fixed rectangle via our mobile device or via our television screen. But with virtual reality, we have the ability to be inside the video and experience things in an entirely new way. You all might have heard me talk before about human media. This is the next evolution of human media. We are in the live streaming phase now of communication. It used to be that we would communicate with each other via text-based interactions, right, on bulletin boards and, that, and then on social media. Uh, it was a text-based environment. Along comes Hangouts and Periscope. All of a sudden, we are doing live streaming, and we, we are interacting with, with individuals, albeit a flat interaction. It is more human. It's more living and, and, and breathing interaction. The new way of that is virtual reality, where we have the ability to step inside those stories. This is very important uh, to understand, and that is just as we had to make our websites responsive for mobile, so too will we have to make our websites, our content, our video content, our images responsive for VR. People are going to have the ability to step inside the internet and experience content in an entirely new way. It's three-dimensional, it's immersive, and it's all around you. So here is a forecast for some of these VR head mounts, um, head mounted displays, and basically the, the Google Cardboard, Oculus Rift, HTC Vive that will be coming out. And in 2020, there will be 25 million 
of these de devices out, okay? So that's in just four years. This wave is coming. It's going to be the next computing platform. And that's why organizations and brands really need to pay, pay attention um, to this because they not only have the ability to leverage that interaction to develop a deeper sense of empathy with their customers, but they also have the ability to leverage that deeper sense of interaction with their own people in their own organization when it comes to meeting. So where do you watch VR? A variety of places. You can watch it with flat apps. Um, a lot of uh, places now are foregoing flat apps and going to more immersive apps. So apps that are made with web VR and WebGL, where you actually feel like you're inside an app and consuming that content all the way around. Individual apps for brands. You can also view it on YouTube. Uh, turn your phone to the side, the video splits stereoscopically, and you can put it inside Google Cardboard. That does not work for iOS yet, but we hear that that's coming right around the bend um, now. You can go to Shrimp Eyes, you can go to Little Star, or also Facebook 360 video. There isn't a way to view, view um, easily view Facebook 360 video within the Facebook feed right now, but you can certainly scroll around those videos. And you know, because Oculus Rift is tied to Facebook, that they are going to make darn sure that you're able to view those videos in a headset very easily, really soon. So this is a photo of me inside VR. Uh, sounds really nerdy, but I'm on the edge of a volcano watching a documentary about a volcano. And all of these places, just as you would be on a live stream or a hangout or something like that, are places that you can be inside. I, I'm on an Oculus Rift, a DK2. I'm interacting with other people who are also behind their avatars. That will change and that they will no longer have avatars who will actually be able to see um, living, breathing individuals just like you were right in front of me through holograms, through immersive video. Here are some of the spaces to watch um, and some of the, the, the spaces that organizations right now are meeting in, in VR in order to do business. Altspace VR, High Fidelity, Project Sansar, VR Chat, and B Time are just a couple that we'll look at today. So for instance, this is Project Sansar and people are going to movies in VR, right? They have cinemas, kind of like Second Life. People are, are, are conducting business, they're having shopping experiences as well. This is VR chat. You can sit around a fire with other individuals that you may or may not know and uh, tell ghost stories. Uh, there is a, a comedy club experience right below that in VR chat. People are going to VR chat in order to consume comedy content. Shopping and also tourism, virtual tourism, is a huge draw for VR chat. You don't need a heavy consumer headset in order to interact with other people in your organization online in some of these spaces. With VTime, all you need is a cardboard box. So here they are. You get to pick what your backdrop is. Imagine telling someone, what, what kind of, you know, where do you want to meet today? Do you want to Skype? Do you want to hang out? you want to FaceTime? And that person saying, I would like to meet in front of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Well, you can do that. Um, and more and more organizations are doing that just with Google Cardboard. It streams on Google Cardboard with an app, and you have the ability to use a cardboard device to see someone who's right across from you. I want to talk a little bit about the inputs for some of these uh, virtual reality experiences that we'll all want to pay attention to. This is one with haptics. So right now in virtual reality, it's primarily a viewing and audio experience, right? You're able to see, you're able to hear. But what's coming are haptic gloves and hand controls. So there's air pressure inside these gloves that manipulate the gloves so that when you put it out, you can feel vibrations, you can feel a handshake, right? You can shake someone's hand on the other side of the world and feel it through these gloves. Something really particular to pay attention to as far as collaboration, because in the future, inside these virtual reality experiences, we are going to be able to collaborate with individuals like we have never been before. So here I am with a couple of these uh, 3D hand controls with the Oculus Rift. These 3D hand controls will be coming out later this year, but the Oculus Rift is on my face and I am inside a gaming environment and I am playing ping pong with someone on the other side of the world or the other side of the room, we're not quite sure, and I'm able to feel that vibration in my hand controls we are able to together, myself and the other person on the other side of the room, build something with blocks, right? Not in the same room, but I'm able to feel the same vibrations and build blocks with these hand controls. 
So it just gives you an idea, a little glimpse into the future on what kind of collaboration we're going to be able to do for organizations in this space. This is Tilt Brush, and I don't know if you're able to play that video um, or not. It doesn't look like it's popping up my screen. But this is a device with the HTC Vive, and you are able to paint in VR. And you are able to, uh, this was inside a, a bar in, in Austin, and you're able to, to take it and move it all the way around. And if people are making some amazing creations, what might that do to, in the future to uh, graffiti, to entertainment, the ability to do 3D modeling in the air? Uh, that will be fascinating watch and a collaborative tool. Talk about reinventing the whiteboard when you can have people on different sides of the world who are collaborating in virtual reality space and actually using the screen to paint and to interact. Another input that's coming in VR is vestibular input. So we are not only having the ability to watch the video and to hear the video with positional audio all the way around you, you have the ability to feel the video. These are nerve waves um, that go inside these headphones. It manipulates your vestibular system and it makes you feel uh, like you're moving with the video. I don't know if you're able to click that frame below, but these Entrum 40 headphones um, were on a, a racetrack and uh, you're, you're watching the video move all the way around the screen and they turn on the, the device and suddenly you feel like you're moving to the left and the right. I'm not sure if that had to undergo clinical trials or what. It does raise some questions um, about how it makes people feel. So if you're watching right here, watching the video, yeah, yeah, you'll don't. notice when he turns oh, wow. around. See how my body is moving? Oh my gosh. And you're not able to, to control it, you yes, have to hold on. So that's just an indication on how uh, people are not only allowing you to watch the video, but with vestibular input, allowing you to feel the video and move your body as well. Those aren't available to the public yet. I'm not sure when they will come out, um, but a lot of questions about that too, with what kind of input and what kind of things are we doing to our body in order to get that greater sense of immersion. smell vision is upon us with some of these VR headsets. Uh, companies are coming out with, with cartridges that you can put in them and actually smell flowers, smell the beach, smell mists and everything that, that you can, you know, virtually, watching a virtual reality video about a particular story or a brand and you not only hear it, you not only see it, but you smell the beer from the Budweiser beer, beer garden. All of that um, is coming and so we, we need to be prepared for it. This also presents storytellers with a unique opportunity to allow people to step inside stories. So we shot an experience not too long ago, I'll have it out for here um, when we're done that you all can see it, that we can place people inside Zambia. They can see individuals who have to crawl on the ground because they lack mobility. And they can understand the problem better so that perhaps they'll contribute to the solution. This particular story will come out on the Washington Post in a couple of weeks and is just one example of how storytellers and content creators are using virtual reality to try to create a sense of empathy. What if you all had the ability to recognize the signs of stroke, more so than reading in a flat brochure, more so than looking at a still photo, but you could actually step inside the story of, of, of a stroke victim or a stroke survivor and understand what they see? we're able to do that in virtual reality and we can place you inside the MRI. What if we wanted you to better understand what it's like to be a homeless veteran? We can place you inside the woods where some of these homeless veterans sleep and we can allow you to see that in hopes that you will have sense, a greater sense of empathy for the problem, perhaps you'll contribute to the solution. So what is next when it comes to virtual reality in organizations? Well, what's next is the metaverse. The metaverse is the internet that you can step in, into. It is no longer a flat world, it's three-dimensional world, and there's what's called room-scale VR. Room-scale VR is the ability to walk around a room as if I was walking around here, I can pick up items from a virtual shopping cart and pay for them uh, as if I was you know, scrolling on, on a screen. It's the ability to be in a place in your bedroom, essentially. And you'll see that in, in gentleman right there, he has a vibe on and he has a 3D touch controls and he's using it to interact with his environment. So hand controls within mobile VR are also coming that with some of those, those devices uh, that they're passing around and also Google Cardboard, you would have the ability to have hand controls within Cardboard and do some of those things. 
Suan is an all-in-one headset that doesn't even require a mobile device. It works just with Wi-Fi that's coming out. Light field cameras that you would have the ability as, as, as video individuals, just like cameras that they have back there, they're capturing light fields and then they put that into a game engine and they're able to walk around the video, right? Fun stuff, walking around the video. Also, Project Tango, which is a, a 3D mapping uh, a technology that will become a part of a lot of our devices in the coming years. I want to close by offering a book recommendation. If you haven't read Ready Player One by Ernest Cline, how many of you all have read it or, or have heard of it? Some of the people in the back, yes. You all will hear of it, of it very soon because Steven Spielberg just signed on to direct the movie. It's all about virtual reality. It's all about this coming metaverse that's coming, which is the next computing platform. And it talks about not only the possibilities with that, but the challenges of that when you are allowing individuals to be in virtual places that are sometimes more attractive than being in the real world. So all of those questions as organizations that we will have to tackle as well. I want to close with this quote from Johnny Ross from VRLA. It's a great convention in LA. And he says, we are turning a really big corner. It's fast, and it's going to get weird. <laughs> so, thank you for your time today. I appreciate it and encourage all of you to try virtual reality, step inside those stories, and see how you all might be able to use that with your own organizations. Thanks.